Ok, euh, je vais commencer. Ah, bah, vas-y, vas-y. J'ai précisé, donc maintenant, on a Martin Richard qui va nous parler de test avec Asincayo. Ok, euh, je voulais savoir si ça vous va si je fais la conf en anglais, parce que j'aimerais bien pouvoir euh, mettre la conf sur le dépôt GitHub de mon projet euh, après. Et ça va à tout le monde si je passe en anglais. Ok, so my very first talk in English. So uh, I will be a bit stressed, and if I say something you don't understand, please just laugh at me so I can know that I'm doing something wrong. Yeah. Okay, so uh, my name is Martin. I am a system and network engineer at Always Data, a hosting company based in Paris. And I'm going to present you Async Test, which is a testing framework I've built uh, to test Async IO code. So in a nutshell, during this presentation, I will try to convince you that writing unit tests is something cool to do. I will also uh, present you um, kind of real world, ex world example of uh, some code to test with AsyncIO. And uh, during, uh, this, uh, with this example, we will see uh, how Async Test can help you. So, um, first thing, uh, why do you want to do unit tests? Uh, one thing I love with unit testing is that you can assess reliability. Reliability here is the converse of anxiety. Anxiety is when you are not sure that your code works, you, might be, uh, you may have your pager that will uh, trigger an alert uh, during the night and uh, stuff like that because you have a bug in production. And so unit testing is cool because usually it will help you to have, uh, it will give you an insight of how good your work is. And so this is cool because um, you can uh, detect obvious mistakes and uh, don't have to feel sorry in your boss office uh, saying something like, yeah, well, I should have seen that before, sorry. Your unit test will catch obvious mistakes and stuff like that and uh, will help you to sleep better eventually. Oh yes, it also prevents regression uh, during uh, refactoring. This is something really cool. Like, you have uh, one of your colleagues that left the company, did some horrible code, and you definitely want to change it and uh, rewrite it. With unit test, you know that what you are doing and what you are changing uh, will still work, and so you're less afraid of fighting the technical depth of your company. So eventually you get a uh, um, bonus at the end of your semester. Also, you want consistency, and this is probably the thing I love the most with unit tests, is that this will be an occasion, an opportunity for you to exercise your API. What I mean by that is that it will be the first time that you will uh, actually use your own code. So you will be able to see if it's easy to use, if it works correctly, and uh, if you don't introduce like side effects or uh, out coupling that is uh, difficult to spot when you write your code. For instance, if you have a getter that has side effects, when you are trying to test this getter function, uh, usually writing the test will be complicated because we won't be able to have an isolated environment where everything, uh, the, the case will always be repeatable and work consistently. So uh, what is, somehow it helps you to see if your API is easy to use and if you design correctly your code. So you will help your colleagues to use correctly what you built and um, prevent other mistakes. Obviously, it will also uh, help you to assert that backward compatibility is working, which is pretty great when uh, you can tell to your colleagues, hey, you can uh, upgrade my package because you can be sure that your code won't break after uh, the update. And so, long story short, unit tests help you to write better API eventually. So now let's go through the example. I've got a small package called Pied Piper here. And in this package, I've got a module called Network. And so as you can see, just right next to the package, I created a test package, which contains one uh, module called Test Network. The idea is to mirror the structure of your tests, uh, of your package, so uh, you can conveniently uh, isolate the test from the package. So if you want to make a distribution, you don't have to uh, bundle the test with them, with the, the code. And uh, you can also easily know where the package is actually located if you have to configure like the import pass in Python. 
So uh, this is my network.py module. It's basically a class called the resource downloader with uh, three important uh, methods. So you instantiate the, instantiate, oh, the resource downloader with an URL, and uh, you can call get parsed URL to get uh, components of the, this URL. So for instance, the host, port, uh, do we want to use SSL and the query, the, the pass query. Uh, we've got one coroutine, asynchronous function uh, download. And we also have a last function called refresh, which allows you to say that you want to uh, re-download the resource every, for instance, five seconds. So asynchronously and in the background, every five seconds, the download uh, coroutine will be uh, scheduled and uh, triggered again. So now let's start by uh, with uh, network, test network.py. Uh, just to know, uh, who here uh, don't uh, write unit test right now and have never been using unit test package or something like that? Okay, great. So I won't spend too much time explaining what a test key is and uh, how to use it. So here I just created a simple uh, test case which tests uh, get parse URL. And so my, my test case here is designed to, and I will read the sentence, uh, to, I create an instance of a test case which is basically I build a situation and I want to assert that everything I, um, the, uh, the outcome of the situation is uh, the one I expect. So you can run your test this way by instantiating the test case. But most of the time what we will do is use a test runner, which is basically a script that will find all test underscore functions, uh, methods in test case in your package, and uh, run them and uh, give you a report of what failed and what succeeded. So this is pretty obvious. So uh, this is my first test. Basically I've got my first situation and my assertion later. So uh, if you know how it works, you know that we just uh, ensure that the result of get parse URL is exact, exactly um, this outcome. And another example would be uh, this one with uh, assert raises, which ensures that uh, value error is raised uh, if I put an uh, invalid URL uh, in the constructor of my objects. I believe that it's important to test uh, the exceptions that are raised because they are part of your API. So if your users um, have to handle error cases, and they will have to, uh, you want to accept that they will always get a consistent exception so they don't have to change their code and then accept block uh, during the next release of your package. So to run the test, it's pretty easy. Here we uh, use the test runner of uh, the standard package unit test, which uh, shows that you can have uh, one test that failed and uh, the name of that test and the uh, reason of the failure. So I uh, will we'll spend more time on that. And now, um, as you can see, we can have, um, uh, we, we, we will want to, to run uh, different um, inputs to, for the same test. So here I'm just testing like an HTTP URL, an HTTPS URL, but eventually I will have a lot of different uh, input to test. So I would like to refactor that a bit, not to uh, duplicate the code every time. So here what I do is basically I use a dict, which has uh, as a key a small description of the, te of the input uh, case, and then uh, the input and the result I expect. And to run it, I just have to use, uh, to iterate over my dict, and I can use this convenient uh, context manager provided by unit test, which allows to identify which case I'm actually testing in my test function. So here, if I have something like 20 or 30 URLs to, tell, to test, um, if one of them fail, I will have in the test report the exact input that failed. Actually, it will, only, it will print the arguments and their value uh, in the report, so it can help you to quickly spot um, the, um, which test actually failed. Okay, now a uh, more interesting example with AsyncIO. So I will test my uh, download coroutine. This is not very complicated, but I will walk through it. Uh, first, I pass the URL. After that, I just have to open a connection to the server. I can uh, build a request and send it uh, with a stream writer. Then 
I get the headers, which allow me to get the payload size, and so I can read the body. Here I've got the body uh, to, ready to be returned. And eventually I will close the connection to the server uh, in a finery, so even if we have an exception, we can cleanly uh, close the connection. Okay, so the test here is pretty straightforward too. As you can see now, my uh, test function is a coroutine. This is something provided by async test. With unit test, you have to explicitly start the loop and do the stuff. Here, every time you have a test case, a new loop is uh, created and uh, runs the test and then is um, closed. So we can isolate uh, the loops for every test. And, uh, but yes, there is one obvious mistake with this test, which is that if the pipepiper.com server is failing, your test will fail even if your code is correct. So it's now time to discover what mox can do. Uh, who doesn't know what a mock is? Okay, great. So uh, a mock is basically an object that uh, will uh, mock act like another object and uh, replace it conveniently in your test. So for instance, here what we want to mock is the stream reader and stream writer, especially the reader, which will uh, return um, pre, uh, 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 the response we expect from the server without actually contacting the, the original server. So uh, what we are going to see is that you can configure the behavior so they act as you expect. And uh, what is also really useful with mocks is if you have functions such as assert called with, which allow you to verify that uh, the code actually interacted correctly with the, the mock object. And so called the right functions with the right arguments and stuff. So here we are creating two mocks. Uh, we are mocking the reader and the, and the writer. Uh, so I just have to say that, uh, to say to the mock object that I want it to mock the stream reader. So when I use the mock, uh, it will share the same API than the original object. And uh, thanks to async test, you can uh, mock easily uh, um, classes and stuff which have coroutines functions in them. Uh, here, an example with read. I configure the read uh, coroutine to return uh, this answer when uh, the read uh, coroutine is invoked and uh, run by the loop. So the same thing with read until here. So um, <clears throat> quickly about mocks. Um, when you call, for instance, uh, mock dot read, read is also a new mock instance, and if you and when you call uh, the, the read function, it will also return a new mock. So you will get a chain of mock objects that you can uh, conventionally use uh, in your test. I said that too, and I said that too already. Great, so now we have to use something to inject our mocks in our test. And this is what we do with patch. Patch is uh, here at the... Um, context manager, which will uh, temporarily replace the symbol asyncio open connection with a mock object, which will behave uh, as configured. So here we say that we want that when open connection is called inside this context manager, uh, instead of actually opening a connection to the server, we just want to call the create mocks function that we um, presented before. So here, what it does in a nutshell is uh, the same test than before, but when open connection will be called, we get the, mo the mock object will be returned and the fake answer that is uh, expected from the server will be returned. You can also use patch as a decorator. Uh, you can use it as a decorator on the test case class, so it will decorate every test method uh, in your um, in your test, test case class, or on any function and coroutine. Uh, also, you can use it on generators, since coroutine and generators share a lot of uh, traits, uh, while uh, patching on coroutine on generators doesn't work with uh, unit tests. You can also use something like patch.multiple and dict and object to patch uh, everything you want. They are just convenient functions to uh, patch many things. You can check that on the doc. It's provided by unit tests and just overloaded by async tests uh, to support coroutines. 
And uh, I also added some advanced features because uh, like for instance, when you have a coroutine, usually the coroutine will be paused because it's waiting on IO and stuff. So you can choose to have the patch um, working only inside the coroutine. So when the coroutine is running, so when the coroutine is paused, the patch is disabled. And uh, when you start it again, it, uh, it, the, the patch is resumed again. Or you can say, okay, I want this patch to live as long as the coroutine is, uh, is living. Even if it's paused, the patch will stay active. It depend uh, in some cases, I had to make this, this, this distinction in my code because I had uh, two concurrent coroutines which were pa patched differently uh, and were patching the same symbol. So I had to handle this concurrency. Okay, so uh, last example, which is a bit more funny than the other one because you can control time. But before controlling time, let's see something uh, pretty convenient with test case. Uh, you can set a setup function, a setup method, uh, which will uh, do some boilerplate, uh, like creating the context of the situation you want to test. And uh, here what we do is that we replace the original uh, download uh, method by a mock download, uh, which will uh, return a different payload every time. So the first call, we will get payload zero, next payload one, payload two, every time download is called, which allows us to verify that the refresh uh, will, will um, operate correctly. Uh, as you can see, at the end of the, the setup function, I started my patch and I register the cleanup function patch stop, which will be invoked uh, after the test run to, to clean up uh, what I started in the setup. I can also use something called um, uh, teardown, which is another method that will be called after the test case run. Um, but there is one catch here, which is that uh, it will only run if the test succeeded. So it's not really great for cleanup. Usually you want to set a cleanup function which will always be called even if the test failed. So for instance, uh, stopping a patch or uh, closing a file or another resource. And uh, also one nice tip from async test is that you can use uh, coroutines for teardown, cleanup functions and setup. So now my test. Uh, here what I do is that I will uh, ask for a refresh every five seconds. So here I added this decorator. This decorator, fail on, uh, allows to configure how we want the test case to do some tests uh, implicitly. Here what it does, it says that if we have got an active handle scheduled on the loop, the test will fail. What it, mean, what it means is that if I schedule a refresh after five seconds, if the refresh did not, uh, did not proceed because the event is still scheduled by the loop, it means that my test didn't actually test that the refresh worked. So what a sync test will say is that you have job scheduled that did not run, you probably excited your test too early. I've got several uh, useful checks such as, uh, okay, uh, several useful checks such as uh, you register the reader and uh, you want to uh, remove it or uh, also a test, um, a failing t a test failure that happens if the loop actually did not run. So for instance, uh, it happened a lot when you, we used uh, yield from uh, syntax because uh, we didn't have this async uh, keyword to put. And uh, so it was not a syntax error if uh, we defined the coroutine without uh, decorating it with the coroutine decorator. And so in that case, usually what it, what uh, what happened was that the test was just simply ignored because it was called, the coroutine uh, was instantiated but never ran. So here, the, those tests can uh, answer that you didn't do a stupid mistake like not actually doing the test and running it. So um, here, Instead of the normal test case, I, I uh, inherit from clocked test case, which is a test case with a controlled uh, clock, as the name says. And uh, it gives me this convenient coroutine, which is advance five for five seconds here. And uh, what it does, it basically will uh, make the time run faster. And as you can see uh, in the last example, 
it will not only change the value of the clock, it will uh, call at the right moment the callback that was scheduled. So it will really uh, simulate uh, five seconds of uh, pause in your code, but uh, without actually waiting five seconds, which is convenient in unit testing. So uh, there are also other features in async test, especially if you want to uh, use uh, low level functions such uh, dealing with the selector. Uh, this is useful when you do low level code, but uh, I decided not to uh, show that during the, the talk. Um, I would like to add a support of new constructs from AsyncIO, such as asynchronous iterators and uh, context managers, uh, because uh, they are starting to be used in uh, production code, especially IO HTTP. Some people have uh, issues when uh, trying to, uh, to mock them. And eventually, what I would love to do is a uh, full uh, mocking framework, allowing you to specify that when uh, someone tries to connect to this server, the response must be this response, and uh, not having to mock individual calls, such as we saw before with read and read until, which somehow uh, require that you know how the um, download function works, instead of just uh, knowing what it's expected to do. Uh, maybe one day I will add proactor support for Windows users, but uh, to be honest, uh, don't count on that. And uh, for those who actually use PyTest Async IO, which is uh, useful and works pretty well, uh, you can use Async Test with it because the, all the mocking system uh, will conveniently work with PyTest. And uh, if ever you wonder with uh, using async test, actually, um, uh, my company, the company where I work, always data, obviously. And uh, not to brag, but I heard that people from Mozilla and Cisco are actually using async test uh, for some of their projects in production. So, um, to conclude, just uh, to say that uh, you turn to write unit tests for your async IO code. No, it's easy. Uh, I just wanted to say that. If you have an open source project or a project in your work, uh, please tell in the readme file and the contributing file how to run the tests. Because it's not always that, that obvious as a simple command. And uh, even then some people don't know what is PyTest or Tox or stuff like that. So please tell them how to write the test so they can run them before uh, sending a pull request or something. And also, uh, please try to have your test function, uh, your test uh, scripts easy to invoke. So no hard setup system. So anyone can uh, just clone the repository, call the invoke the, the the command line you said in your file, and so it runs. And conveniently, once you can uh, automate everything, you can start to uh, enable Travis CI continuous integration and stuff, and look like a really professional project on uh, GitHub. So that's all for me. So if you have questions or anything, uh, there is a documentation and code uh, on GitHub. Uh, the example I went through um, is a real world example. So I will publish uh, on the repository the example with all the test case and, um, and uh, complete code. And uh, yes, that's almost all I have to say about it. Okay, we'll take two or three minutes for questions. Uh, you can ask the question in French and uh, I'll translate it for the video. If I can translate it. Uh, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, you talked about the, uh, the importance of writing in a test, and thank you for that. That's really great. <laughs> uh, one metric we follow when we want to um, assert that the project is correctly tested. Uh, is uh, coverage of the test? Yeah. Um, uh, have you tried to, to run some uh, uh, some coverage metrics with async? Is there any problems with um, measuring the lines in the coroutines or? Well, um, actually, to, to run the test, I use uh, nose test, uh, which is pretty old, but um, as convenient uh, tools such as coverage and uh, timing of the tests. And uh, coverage worked pretty well. Um, well, no, I, d I don't remember uh, special problems with coverage of uh, asynchronous code. 
So uh, I guess you can use uh, the, your favorite tool. If it's compatible with uh, the standard unit test package, uh, it will uh, do coverage correctly. Any last question? Okay, thanks, Martin.